Good morning, everyone. Praise God for this wonderful time that the Lord has given us. And it was a beautiful service. The children sang beautiful songs, the younger girls and the older girls. And it gave us a wonderful message. And uh, the sharing by little Jerusha, thank you. And uh, I'm sure whoever is here has been blessed. And praise God for this day. Though Father's Day was celebrated last week, but as uh, we had some inconvenience, we wanted to have it this week. And uh, I would like to greet all the fathers of our church who are here and those who are watching online and would be watching further, that they would have a wonderful Father's Day. May God bless them. And uh, I really thank the Lord for all the fathers on the earth, above all our Heavenly Father, who has set an example for every father on this earth. God bless all, the, all those hardworking, committed, sacrificial, understanding, cheerful, caring, and ever helpful fathers. And today, I want all the children to pray a very special prayer for all their fathers and ask God to bless them with very special strength that you will be able to see something different in them in the days to come. I remember my father, uh, we, we are five sisters and one brother, but my father never looked at us as girls, he looked at us as boys, and he always blessed us and appreciated us for every single thing that we did. And in fact, we were like boys to him because we were always on our feet, ever helping. And I remember how I respect my father. Uh, we had, he was a humble person and he worked very hard, the only breadwinner of the family. And we know years back in the 1950s, and 50, uh, he, was, he joined the railways in 1954. And it was a very small salary. We stayed in Downed, which is a junction on the way to uh, south. And uh, he, was, he joined with a very minimal salary, but we all were blessed because Daddy always kept us happy. He was very cheerful. I remember he used to carry me and uh, rub his cheeks on me, and I still remember. I know all the fathers love their children and thank the Lord for all that our fathers have done for us. And today we are able to stand because our fathers worked hard. It, some may have high jobs and will be able to provide everything for their children, but some have low jobs or something which uh, they may not be able to provide to their family. But I know the love, the, sh the care, and uh, their sacrifice gives it all. And their attention and care to the family is really commendable. There are fathers who need a leisure, but yet they have to go to work. Today, may God bless all the fathers on this earth and may they be able to see their dreams fulfilled. Mothers work hard. Sometimes mothers are not able to wake up in the morning, but there are mothers who have to get up and go. But fathers are there up in the morning, early morning, and they spend time for their children in prayer. They look unto the, their heavenly father to bless their children. I remember pastor wakes up very early in the morning. I get up a little, I wake up a little late, but he's already there up and he prays, he spends time in prayer. And I'm sure the prayer that he's praying for his children and, his, uh, and the congregation that he's taking care of will surely be blessed. I thank the Lord for this commitment that every father has towards the children. God, our Heavenly Father, is a Father who has provided us everything that we need. When He created the world, we all know the story of creation. What did God do? 
Did he create man first? No. Why? Because he saw the earth was empty. How would he place man in an empty earth, on an empty earth? What will man do? But see how great and super um, wise our God is. He created everything on the earth that is necessary for man first. He created the kind of place that man has to live in. Every part of the earth was filled. It was full. And after it was full, he decided to create man. So see such a wonderful father. A father first thinks of providing for his children. And how amazing that God created the world from nothing to fullness. He made it whole and then he made man so that man will have everything that he needs on the earth. According to his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us. We find this in Second Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 4. It further says, an exceeding great and precious, pro exceeding great and precious promises that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Yeah, God made a beautiful world, but man spoilt it, man misused it, but yet still God is trying to provide to us. He is there ever ready to help us whenever we look unto him. Today I would like to concentrate on the different uh, kinds of fathers on the Bi in the Bible. There are seven fathers in the Bible about whom I would like to mention. And as we listen to this particular part, which I would like to share, let us connect ourselves and our fathers to what they have done for us. And accordingly, as the word of God tells us, we will be praying for them. And I would also like to uh, bring to your notice that our pastor is our spiritual father and so I, would, I will not have a separate sermon for pastor's appreciation but this will be in connection to the pastor who is the father, the shepherd of the church. The first father about whom I would like to talk is Adam as I mentioned uh, in the beginning that God created everything that had to be there for a man, for human beings to live on earth, and then he created man. Adam lived in a condition where there was no instruction manual. If we see from Genesis chapters 1 to 4, as literally the first man on the earth, Adam was the first famous father in the Bible. But that also means he had no example to follow when his kids came along. He had to lean on his relationship with his heavenly father. And that's not a bad place to be. When you feel like you're making it up as you go, turn to him to direction. So we see, if you just picture Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God did not leave them like that. He also visited them every day, isn't it? He visited them as a heavenly father. He went to talk to them. He spent the evening with them and he provided them everything that they needed. He also warned them from doing wrong. As a father, it is a father's duty to visit the children, to talk to them, to make them understand what is right and wrong. Be vigilant on your children, upon your children and see that you foresee their life and keep them uh, keep them alert about what things can happen in future if they take wrong decisions 
and encourage them when they take right decisions and also warn them if they are going in the wrong path. We are not supposed to just sit and watch, but we have to keep, be vigilant about our children. God was angry when Adam and Eve disobeyed the, him and he literally sent them out. So we see Adam, the first father, had failed, but God had another plan. Later, we see Noah. In Noah's time, it looked like when God doesn't make sense. It felt like God doesn't make sense. In Genesis chapter 6 to 8, while Adam had to learn on the fly, Noah had to do something that had never been done. And it probably sounded a little crazy. Rain, much less a flood, was beyond the imagination of his culture. But like a lot of biblical fathers, he obeyed anyway. As a result, he saved his sons and their families from destruction. So here we see Noah, the only father left on earth, and God used him, and he also instructed him and told him all that he would need. So here God did not leave Noah alone, and he taught him whatever he has to do in future. And he used him to save his sons and their families from destruction. Another father we see in Abraham, Genesis chapters 12 to 21, talk about the story of Abraham. When patience doesn't feel like a virtue. Like Noah, Abraham obeyed God, even when the instructions seemed odd. But he also had the additional challenge of waiting several decades before the Lord fulfilled his promise. The chances are your kids aren't exactly what you'd like them to be just yet. But remember, God is at work. Even while we wait, but remember, God is at work. Even when we wait, we trust him one step at a time and do our best to be faithful, just like Abraham. We all know the story of Abraham. How difficult and how horrible it would have been when God asked him to sacrifice the only son that he had given him, that too after so many years. He would have been the most happiest father after receiving a child after 100 years. A family who receives a, a child after one year of marriage is so happy. A, a father or mo and mother who receive a child after 10 years is much more happier. And how much more happy Abraham would have been. And God told him to sacrifice that child. But Abraham obeyed God. He said, yes, Lord, I will do as you say. Not only that, he's called the father of faith. He told his servants that he and the child will come back down. Look at his faith. Look at his faith. How many of us plan something for our children way ahead and put it, start working on it right then and there, having faith that God will provide for the future? Yeah, we have to say, sow the seeds with faith. Abraham sowed his seed with faith. And that day, he obeyed God. And God changed everything completely. And today, we see the descendants of Abraham are highly blessed. Next, we see Job. It was like when we lose it all. Job lost everything. Job reflected a lot of the same qualities as other famous dads in scripture. He loved his kids and he even prayed for them regularly. I told you, fathers may seem silent, but they are praying regularly for their children. 
sometimes when you are talking in front of your children, they may say something which may put you down. But I know the fathers still keep quiet and smile at their children because they know what is in their heart. But the child may not know the love and the care that the father has in his heart. I'm sure God honors that thought. He loved his kids and he even prayed for them regularly. But his greatest example came once he lost everything, including his children. Life is filled with tragedy and disappointment. During those situations, we probably teach our kids more about God and faith than all other times combined. Let us teach faith to our children. Let us teach them to pray. Let us, let, yes, all the fathers, I would like you to remember that you have to continue to teach your children to pray so that they don't go to other sources for help when they fall in trouble. Those seasons aren't fun, but they can be teachable moments. Another father I would like to mention is about Jehonadab, mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 10, verses 15 to 17, and in Jeremiah chapter 35. When you want to leave a legacy, when you want to leave a legacy, when you have that deep desire that I have to leave a legacy, Jehonadab probably doesn't roll off the tongue when you think about famous fathers in the Bible. They have heard very less about this particular person in the Bible. But the impact he had on his family lasted for generations. We first see him helping King Jehu fulfill God's plan of wiping out Baal worship in Israel. But years later, long after Jehonadab was gone, Jeremiah met with some of his ancestors, the Rechabites, and they were still honoring him through their lives and, and their commitment to the Lord. Every dad leaves a legacy. We want to strive in life and live in a way that models Jeho Jehonadab. If you look back to your fathers, you will remember that they have set a different example. Every family will have a different example to tell about their fathers. And let us remember that God has a plan for you as a father too to set a legacy. Next, I would like to tell about Joseph, Jesus' earthly dad. When your reputation is at stake, yeah, Joseph, the father of Jesus, faced such a situation where his reputation was at stake. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Jesus, Joseph loved Mary, but he was also confused about what was going on. He wanted to do the right thing, but he wasn't sure what that right thing was until God stepped in. Once he heard from the Lord, Joseph put all his, once he heard from the Lord, Joseph put all his fears and concerns behind him. Just like Mary, he probably heard the snickers behind his back and saw the scrowls, scowls of those who didn't believe his story. His reputation probably took a shot, but obeying God and getting the chance to help raise the Son of God was worth the trouble. And today we see the blessing from this Father Joseph. The last father, father about whom I would like to mention is Jairus. When your best isn't good enough. Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 43, also found in Matthew 9, 18 to 26 and Luke 8, 40 to 56. Jairus did everything the right way when his daughter was on the brink of death. He turned to Jesus for help. Today, we fathers 
also, you fathers also may be in a situation where your children may be in a deep struggle. Your children may be in some other country, but you are away from them. You may not be close by to them, but remember our Father, our Heavenly Father is an ever-present help. Just as Jairus wanted his, his daughter to come out of the brink of death, you may be waiting for your children to come out of the struggle that they may be going through. The only person whom we can turn to is our Heavenly Father. Jesus is our help. But his world still fell apart. Like a lot of biblical fathers and contemporary dads, he faced a challenge of faith in that moment. He could give up or choose to keep trusting Jesus. He remained faithful and it made all the difference in the world. May God teach us from all these examples and whatever struggle you may be going through, remember God our Heavenly Father has set an example and He will teach you he will lead you and guide you in the way that he has to go. Today, I want all the children to pray for their fathers and all the fathers to pray for their children. We are going to spend a little while in prayer. Cheer up all dads. Cheer up. You have not lost. You may feel that everything is gone in my life. My child is not yet settled. My children have not done what I felt that they should have done. Cheer up. Today is the time. Now is the time. Let us pray for our children. Let us all, fathers and mothers, pray for our children. There are mothers who have lost their husbands and are playing the role of a mother. Whoever is watching us today online, my dear young mother or older mother, you may have lost your husband who may not be there to be a father to the child. But remember, God takes the place. He is the heavenly father and you don't have to look to anyone else for help. God wants to bless our children. God wants to honor all that you have done for your children. Dear fathers, don't be dejected, don't be disappointed. God wants to fulfill your dreams and desires for your children. And I would like to tell the children to come, cooperate, listen to, uh, to the advice that your fathers give. Listen to whatever they tell you. And when these two join together, it would be like the current that flows in the water when the angel went and shook the waters. And the first person who received that current received the healing. And when your hearts unite, when your thoughts unite, and when your prayers are combined together, God will do amazing things. Listen to your parents. Listen to whatever your fathers say, whatever your mothers say. And God will work amazingly in your lives. And dear fathers, God will fulfill all the prayers that you have been praying. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Close your eyes. Children, pray very strongly for your fathers. All those who will be watching this service online, whenever you watch it, please, I request you to pray for your fathers. Fathers, pray for your children. Yes, we need the Lord to intervene. Your plans may be big. You may plan many things. But until, unless the Lord, our Heavenly Father, intervenes, it cannot go ahead. Tell God to go ahead before you for whatever you may be planning. Let his presence go before you. All the fathers, please pray. Lord, let your presence go before us, before our children. And whatever is necessary for them and whatever is necessary for us, let it be fulfilled. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us that you are a God who provides us everything that we need. 
You have not left us empty, Lord. You have given us everything that we need on this earth. Thank you for your provision, Lord. Thank you for your provision, Father. Thank you for your love. You have set an example of love by sacrificing your only son for us so that we will be free from sin. Help us to show that love to the children around us. Father, thank you. Thank you for the example of love that you have set before us. Thank you for the example of sacrifice that you have set before us. Lord, we may sacrifice as fathers, but Lord, unless you go ahead and accept it, we cannot succeed. Lord, bless the sacrifice of every father. Yes, Jesus, we thank you. We pray for all the fathers over here, Lord. Bless them, bless them, strengthen them. They have prayed in your sanctuary right now for all their children, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you answer their prayers. Nothing is impossible for you. We pray for the fathers and mothers who are praying for their sick children, for the children who have not been able to get settled in their lives in various ways, whether it is education, job, their career, or even their marriage settlement, or even a home that they need to live in, and the jobs that they are pursuing, Father. I know, Lord, you are hearing them, and you are going to answer them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, for you are going to set a testimony in every father's life today. Lord, I know it was difficult for them to place that prayer point before you because they tried so many years and it did not happen. But Lord, as they have prayed in your presence today, I pray, Lord, that every prayer that the father has prayed, the mother has prayed in the place of a, an, a missing father, Lord, let that prayer be answered. I request you, Lord, to pay very special attention to this prayer that the fathers have prayed and the children have prayed for their fathers. Yes, you are a God who has promised us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. They have come to your feet, Lord. They have asked you something right now and you have to answer them, Father. If you don't answer, we will be disappointed, Father. We need to praise you. We need to set, give you all the glory and honor for what you are going to do in our lives. Father, we want to see testimonies in the days to come. Start working, Lord. Start working for the prayers that your fa the fathers have prayed right now. And Lord, we want to see testimonies coming forward very soon. Thank you, Lord, for you have answered our prayers. Bless every father on earth. Bless our pastors, Lord. Thank you for all our pastors as they continue to tend their congregations, Father. Lord, whatever efforts they take, bless them, Lord. Bless their efforts, Father. Bless their efforts, Lord. Let every church see the fruit of their labor, Lord Jesus. We pray for all the committed and, de and dedicated pastors, Father. Those who always go on their knees and pray are in tears for their congregations. Father, answer their prayers, Lord. We pray for every pastor who has still not understood the meaning of serving you, Father. Almighty God, Father, revive them, make them your true servants, and let them understand that they had a calling and they have to fulfill their calling, Lord. I pray for all the pastor's children and their families, Father. Lord, they would have gone through a difficult time. You have to bless them and settle their lives, Lord. We pray especially for Reverend Daniel, and we want to see a miracle in his life too, Father. We pray for all the pastors once again who have served over here, Lord. Bless each one of them and their families and their congregations wherever they are serving. Thank you, Holy Master. Once again, we submit this time into your hands. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, and you are going to answer our prayers. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.